right, Phil. You better have a damn good reason why I'm seeing you and not the Bob's Burgers movie. Danger Zone. You think up there you're dead. Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Tom Cruise is back trying to protect Goose's son... Gosling in Top Gun Maverick. Okay, so before I give my thoughts on Top Gun Maverick, I should probably say what I thought of the original Top Gun. I like it. I don't love it. I know it's got a lot of classic 80s cheese to it, and that's part of the fun, but my 80s cheese was more Stallone and Schwarzenegger. That's why I get more excited for something like Expendables or the Rocky sequels or Creed. That's the kind of mix of 80s cheese and also legit drama that I get into and I get really nostalgic for, but I appreciate it enough to acknowledge when it's being done well. And this is definitely a Top Gun sequel. If you didn't like the first one, I don't think you're really gonna get into this one. For a while, I say the first third, I wasn't getting too much into it, even though I was acknowledging it was doing everything it's supposed to do. Tom Cruise is back as Maverick, he's still breaking all the rules and making all the higher-ups angry. He's brought back to teach a bunch of these cadets to go on this incredibly dangerous mission. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. Well, I hope it's box office, because these delays cost a lot of money, man. The big thing with me and I don't think it's just me, so this is one of the reasons I'm putting it out there, is that with Tom Cruise movies, I really get into his acting when he puts his ego to the side. And please, 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 don't get me wrong, a lot of actors have egos. You're looking at someone who acknowledges he has an ego and knows the importance of turning himself into a brand and so forth. So there's nothing wrong with it, but there is something to when the ego just gets a little too big that it's distracting. And there are a lot of Tom Cruise performances where that happens. Think Mission Impossible 2, that's probably the best example. But there are plenty of times where he can really put aside and turn in some really good performances. Like my favorite ones are usually the ones where he's kind of pathetic, like Eyes Wide Shut or Magnolia or Edge of Tomorrow. Probably my favorite performance of his is Rain Man because he just blows his temper so much in a way that is so believable. He wears his insecurities on his sleeves in that movie and that's kind of the stuff where I think he shines best. When he's trying to play the superhero or the super villain, that's where I feel like the ego is kind of indulged a little too much. This guy needs an ego check. When even the movie is trying to tell you, it's a little bit of a sign. That is definitely what's happening in the first third of this movie. And again, please don't get me wrong, I know what this is doing. We see this in a lot of action films and 80s action films especially, where just the hero is really praised as the hero and super tough and super masculine. And to be fair, he's one of those people now that because he will fly a plane and hang on to a plane and climb a mountain and do a lot of his own stunts, He's kind of earned that ego. It isn't just coming to a movie to see a good actor act, it's to see him do some sort of huge spectacle. And that is something that's very admirable. And I think it's really cool that this guy will put his life on the line just to entertain you and make the drama and intensity all the more dramatic and intense. Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they gonna get to teach us? The sweatiest volleyball player the Navy has to offer. And like I said, for the first third of the movie, they're all saying the very generic, charming lines that the tough Navy cadets say and calling him an old man and him showing them up and so on and so forth. And it's all very safe, typical writing that, again, you're looking for in a Top Gun sequel. Nothing is really underperforming, but nothing is being added either. Nothing is really being upped until they get in the sky. And obviously, as you've seen in the trailers and the commercials, the flying scenes are really spectacular. I mean, just look at some of these flying scenes. They're so well done, and it's so cool knowing that Tom Cruise and the other actors are in these jets and they're flying them around. But that's not the only thing that gets better. When they start talking about the mission and what the mission is, and they go over it over and over and over again, but it doesn't feel repetitive. It feels like you have an understanding of what they're supposed to do, when they're supposed to do it, the dangers that are involved. Danger zone. And it gets more and more intense. And even though the writing is still that very standard one-liners and the you can't perform this, yeah, just watch me, that kind of dialogue, it's still done 
done very, very well, and I feel like all the actors suddenly get a lot more serious and a lot more grounded Ironically, when they're higher up in the air. And as the mission gets closer and closer, the gravity of what they're supposed to do gets heavier and heavier. So I really, really like the film when it gets more serious, because even the fun moments are more fun. If you want a perfect example, uh, in the last third of the film, uh, Tom Cruise and someone else, they're trying to sneak into a place, and they find this plane there, and they say, you think that'll fly? And Cruise goes, only one way to find out. That's Tom Cruise acting like he doesn't know there's a camera on him, like he's just talking normal. The first third of the movie, he's acting like he always knows where the camera is and he's gonna say every line like it's a commercial. There's a scene where they pick him up and they're throwing him out of a bar kind of as a joke and he just has this punchable smile on his face. I'm not a teacher. I just wanna manage the expectations. Yeah, that's the smug smile you can see the projectionist fist try to punch. It's that kind of Tom Cruise that doesn't drive me insane, but doesn't win me over either. I am much more into the Tom Cruise that's in the rest of the movie. When they get up in the air, when they have to focus on the mission, when he has to make really tough choices about people he cares about. Also, a surprise appearance by Val Kilmer, which I was not expecting. And I don't think that's giving anything away because they say it in the credits. And I do think it would have been a lot more powerful if they did not include his name in the credits if he just appeared. But part of what makes it work isn't just that it's Val Kilmer there and he actually does say a few words as well vocally but Tom Cruise's acting really really works there again it's him acting his heart out but also interacting with someone that you know he has this long history with and it has to be the actual actor there and it does make a really really big difference and it is very very emotional so that when you do get to the scenes of them flying in the mission it is very intense and very well done again you can just see how well shot these action sequences are and the flying sequences i mean they're just stellar this movie does the flying scene so well, I'm holding my breath even while they're training. That's how well these sequences are done. So I don't want to give the impression this is a flawless masterpiece, or even if you're not a fan of the first Top Gun, go see this one. No, it is at its core still a Top Gun movie. I like it for that, but I love it when it becomes something more, and it does that as the film progresses and gets closer to the mission. So let's give it three out of four shirtless volleyball nipples. With that said, what do you think? Did you like this one more than the original Top Gun? Did you like the original Top Gun? Do you feel like that plays a big part in you enjoying this film? Do you think it matters if you liked the first Top Gun or didn't enjoy it? Or are you someone that sees this as a complete failure, that it is too corny, it is too cheesy? Or are you just saying to yourself, God damn, those flying scenes are just so amazing, I'm gonna have fun either way. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Take care.